What's up guys, Alec Alcari here. Today, I'm gonna to share with you guys something that I think is pretty cool that I've noticed over the years. I've always been relatively lean my whole life, but sometimes more so than others. And what I've noticed is, every now and then, without changing my diet at all, over a period of several months, I lose a few pounds of scale weight without losing any strength. And I end up pretty damn lean and ripped for a drug-free lifter who eats whatever the hell he wants and really only focuses on gaining strength. This means that for the most part, I don't do cardio, I almost never do a set of any exercise for more than 5 reps, I have absolutely zero urgency when I'm lifting and routinely rest anywhere from 5 all the way up to 10 minutes between sets of squats and deadlifts, and I eat pretty much a totally unrestricted diet, only shying away from excessive amounts of candy and desserts. If this was a case study and you had to guess my body fat, most people would probably think I was another obese power lifter. Yet, here I sit at the time of filming this video with quite possibly a single digit body fat percentage. So what's the secret? How does someone who does everything wrong when it comes to fat loss somehow keep losing fat? My theory is explosive training. Training for power and speed and utilizing explosive lifts to maximize these specific physical qualities. Let's take a look at my history to see if this theory holds any water. This is me in 2011 when I trained for general strength. I weighed about 165 pounds here and I could deadlift about 550 pounds and squat about 430 pounds. This is me in 2013 when all I trained for was Olympic weightlifting. I weighed about 152 pounds here and I could still deadlift 550 pounds, but by now I could squat 495 pounds and I could also snatch 245 pounds and clean and jerk over 300 pounds. My running vertical jump was well over 40 inches at this time, as evidenced by my ability to grab the rim on a regulation basketball hoop while having a standing reach of only about 80 inches. The biggest difference in my training between these two time periods is simply the addition of the Olympic lifts performed at a relatively high frequency. Yet, overall, I was substantially leaner, substantially lighter, and substantially stronger in 2013. Fast forward to 2017. By this point, I had stopped training for Olympic weightlifting and only focused on powerlifting. I had also not done any jump training or sprint training for several years. I weigh about 162 pounds here, and my best squat and deadlift are 530 pounds and 585 pounds, respectively. I'm noticeably fluffier than I was in 2013, and even though I'm substantially heavier, I'm really not much stronger. This is me as of this week. I weigh about 155 pounds right now. My training has been almost exactly the same for nearly a year now, and I've recently tripled 550 pounds on the deadlift, which matched my lifetime PR, so I certainly haven't gotten any weaker. I haven't changed my diet at all, and I have in fact gone out of my way to overstuff myself at times so that I would stop losing weight. The only recent difference is that in November, I re-implemented the push press into my routine and started doing a high volume jump workout once a week. This is also the exact same time that my body weight started to gradually drop and I began getting leaner. Coincidence? Or do the explosive contractions have some sort of systemic effect on the body that goes beyond their simple ability to burn a calorie? HIT or high intensity interval training, basically different forms of sprinting, has long been known by the fitness community to be one of the most time efficient ways to get ripped while preserving muscle even though the workout itself doesn't burn all that many calories or nearly as many calories as a drawn out session of steady state cardio would. Initially, the idea of EPOC or excess post-exercise oxygen consumption, colloquially known as the afterburn effect, was bandied about as the reason for this phenomenon. Yet, handfuls of recent studies have shown that the whole idea was actually a bit overblown. And over a 24 hour period, you don't actually burn any more calories from a standard HIIT protocol than from traditional steady state cardio. So why then have the sprinting protocols been so effective at getting people lean? I scoured the research, and to be honest, I couldn't find very much on this specific topic. Now, there is a lot of research on what's been deemed high intensity exercise. It mostly focuses on interval sprints as opposed to sprints done with a full or near full recovery between bouts, which is how I've always done them. But if the mode of exercise itself, in this case sprinting, isn't burning an inordinate number of calories during exercise, and the epoch effect isn't responsible, then perhaps the success of this type of exercise has something to do with the specific type of muscular contraction itself and the greater effect that has on the body. 
rather than simply looking at it from a calorie burning standpoint. My inkling is that repeatedly performing explosive contractions, especially of the legs and the hips, which are some of the largest muscle groups in the body, has a profound effect on how efficiently the body handles insulin. It's long been accepted that traditional weight training can lower fasting glucose levels and improve insulin sensitivity. So it would stand to reason that using these same muscles in a similar but much more violent fashion would yield a more pronounced effect. I found a couple studies that showed marked improvements in glucose tolerance and fasting glucose levels after several weeks of high intensity exercise, as well as another study which showed that high intensity exercise significantly reduced total abdominal fat, including visceral fat, compared to low intensity exercise. Now, if insulin resistance is known to cause an increase in abdominal visceral fat, and high intensity exercise has been proven to both increase glucose tolerance and preferentially burn abdominal fat, yet the epoch effect of HIT has largely been shown to be a myth, I don't think it's far-fetched to assume that performing a large volume of explosive muscular contractions, whether they be running, jumping, or weightlifting type movements, would have a similar effect on the body regardless of rest periods utilized and would lead to impressive improvements in body composition over time. Now, I'm not saying that you should dump everything you know about getting lean and just start doing the Olympic lifts or doing 100 max effort vertical jumps every day and eating a cake every night before bed. Obviously, I was born somewhat lucky in that my body doesn't retain much fat unless I get really lazy and I don't have to try very hard to stay lean. What I am saying, however, is that in conjunction with a proper diet and training program, Doing more explosive exercises in the form of jumps, sprints, and Olympic lifts, and more importantly, truly focusing on improving your output capacity on these exercises, rather than just going through the motions, might be just the bump you need to push you into the next level of leanness. And if my theory regarding insulin sensitivity is correct, it might just improve your overall health as well. Take it or leave it, I don't give a fuck because I know that it works. I've experienced it firsthand multiple times. I have a full six pack right now and I've never done a cutting diet a day in my life. I like eating way too much to waste my time on shit like that. Half the reason I compete in powerlifting is so I have an excuse to eat like a pig all day after I make weight. So if you're ready to take your leanness to the next level and improve your overall health and athleticism in the process, start doing more explosive work and turn your body into a powerful fat burning machine. That's all I got for now guys. Please be sure to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And if you're interested in online coaching, be sure to shoot me an email at onkiri.elite at gmail.com. I'll catch you guys next time.